I mean, I could tell you guys stories of me quitting. You know, there's one time I came back from the UCLA track and I was working on a bunch of US track guys. And I left there from being there from six in the morning till noon with $20 in my hand. And I'd done that a dozen times. And I thought, what kind of idiot am I? Like, why am I doing this? Mm. And I think entrepreneurs, you're gonna have those conversations with yourself. And you have to find something that pushes you through those. And luckily for me, the thing that pushed me through is every time I used this on someone, they were so gracious. Like, oh my God, that feels so good. When can I have it again? And I thought, I can't quit. This is Start at the Storefront. Today's guest is Dr. Jason Worsland, founder of Therabody. The journey in creating Therabody has been a very personal one for Dr. J. In 2007, he was cruising around LA on his motorcycle when a car cut him off and sent him flying. The recovery from that crash was long and frustrating, prompting Dr. J to invent the first iteration of Theragun, an instrument which helped his body heal through percussive therapy. Theragun was far from an overnight success though, and Dr. J spent years trying to convince anyone who would listen about the benefits of using one. But over time, as Theragun found its way into the hands of more and more people, the feeling was undeniable. Now, with the launch of a new line of CBD products, the company formerly known as Theragun has become Therabody. So listen in as we cover everything from how a faithful knock on his door from a famous stranger convinced him not to give up, why innovation leads science, and why Dr. J believes the three most important attributes in an entrepreneur are persistence, consistency, and delusion. Now, back to the episode. Welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we have the founder of what a lot of people know as Theragun, now moving to Therabody, Dr. J. Thanks so much for joining. I, I wanted to start with a bit of your story. And so what, what made you want to start the company? We know it was an accident, but if you could just walk us through the, the genesis of the idea. Well, it wasn't, it's, it sort of happened. It wasn't something that I sat in my house and consciously thought about how to, to create a, a business. You know, I'd had businesses in the past in my younger years and I had just started a practice. So in my mind, I had a business. That was what I was going to do. I'm a chiropractor and I opened a business. So I think there's a few things and I can tell a real quick story, but it, it, I think the idea that this thing evolved over time, it wasn't something that I, I didn't have this aha moment where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to sell, you know, hundreds of these or whatever. In 2007, I was in a, I had a practice here in Los Angeles. I had just started. Uh, I was on my, on the freeway, on the 10 freeway, splitting traffic on a motorcycle, which is what you do in LA. And a car cut me off and I hit the side of this car going 55 miles an hour. And I sustained a lot of soft tissue damage from it. I, that was October 17th of 2007. I, just a little backstory. Uh, my parents, when I grew up, had a farm. Uh, my, my father's from Norway. My, my mother's distant families from London. And so I, I had, you know, I, we grew up, we didn't have a lot of money and we grew up just being resourceful and having fun. Um, the farm taught me a lot of things. It taught me how to use my hands, how to work with things. And then, you know, as I got older, we started using power tools and I actually had a business where I was installing flooring and I did stairways and custom railings and I used my hands a lot and designing things that you kind of would picture and then using your hands to create those I've always enjoyed that. I didn't realize that it was going to pay back later on. So with this kind of resourcefulness idea, I'm, I got injured in my motorcycle accident. Now it's December and now January of 2008. And all of these things are full blown, meaning every injury I had was at its worst. The inflammation was bad. I had total atrophy on my right side. Hmm. I couldn't feel these three fingers. And as a chiropractor, those are my tools. And the pain was, was, the worst part of it. I have a brother who's a chiropractor and he'd been in a water skiing accident about two years before me. And he lives in Utah. Our kids are the same age. I would fly home and stay with him at his house. And I remembered him treating himself. He had this harness he was hanging himself with and using this vibration. And I just assumed he knew what he was doing. It didn't register for me until I had my injury. And I called him up and I'm like, bro, what were you doing? So he explained to me about this product he called a vibrocusser that he used this vibration tool to put on his body and it made the pain subside. And I was like, huh, that's what I need. So I called my business partner. I'm like, dude, do we have one of these? He said, yeah, it's in the closet. I never use it. It's old. 
drove over there, grabbed it, did what my brother told me to do with it. And it was about the size of a Coke can. And I had a variable speed on the bottom. I'd turn that on, find the speed that felt good. And I'd just lodge it underneath my armpit. And that vibration immediately would make the pain go away. But I learned later on, because it was vibration, my body accommodated to that. So I see, you know, you have headphones on and earbuds and a watch or socks or a bracelet or a wedding ring. What happens after you put those on is the body accommodates that information. It means it takes it and puts it in your subconscious. Your body doesn't need to be aware of that. It's not threatening. Well, this vibration fit in that category. It only worked for a certain period of time and it was like a couple of minutes. And I started to get irritated by that because it would work and then it would not work and then it would work and then it would not work. And I'd have to keep taking it out of my body. Now it's January, early January of 2008. And I'm, you get to know me a little bit. I'm turning green now. I'm pissed because this thing's not working, but I knew it could work. And I'm taking my thumb and I'm shoving my thumb underneath my scapula and I can feel where the pain is sort of residing. And I thought, I need something that just punches that area. And I thought, where can I buy one of those? I looked and there wasn't anything and I wasn't making money at the time. So I thought, well, shit, I'll just make one. Went out to my garage, brought in a couple of tools. I'm sitting in my apartment in Culver City. I have to put my hand on my head like this to take the pressure off my nerve and my neck. So I'm using one hand to kind of mess around with this thing and I make something and I use it and it's amazing. And I was, and it immediately gave me relief. And I was expecting it to do the same thing the vibration tool did, but it didn't. I never, it, my body never got used to it. And I was fascinated by that. So long story short, from 2008 to 2015, I created five different versions. And I would make, a cup, make one and sell it and get feedback. And I'd tweak some things and make it and sell it and feedback. And then I finally got to one that I felt really comfortable with. 2014 NFL season, I'm working on one of their players. They connect me with the trainer, Joe. Joe says, hey, why don't you come out to our first preseason game and bring as many Theraguns as you can bring. So I show up with 22 of these in these big sample canvas bags, and I flop it down in the hotel lobby, and these guys are paying cash for the product. And think about who was on the team in 2014. Everyone, all the players got one. Yeah. So I leave. I'm thinking, that was amazing. I'm going to, at the time, guys, I was trying to use this on my clinic, in my, in my, on my patients, in my clinic. I was talking to other chiros and other physios, but that was a hard sale because they're like, how much is it? What can I bill for it? Who do I use it on? What's the protocols? Right. I handed it to an athlete. They didn't give a shit about any of that. They're just like, right. I love that. I'm using it. Thank you very much. So that, that trajectory took us, I wouldn't, don't think I'd be on the phone with you guys had it not been in these athletes' hands. So from 2008 to 2015, I made those different versions. I met my business partner in 2015, but more importantly, I think it's really important. And I, I, I want to share this. When I started doing this, I would get laughed out of rooms. I would as ask to leave golf ranges. I was asked to leave tennis matches, like get out of here. That's too loud. What the hell is that anyway? And, and I didn't realize it, but I was creating this massage gun space. Every day, my goal was to treat someone. I wasn't making a goal every day to create this space. It was a byproduct. And so now you look on the market, there's hundreds of these everywhere. A lot of them are still our attachments. They pay us royalties because they still are attachments. And we have a good legal team that takes care of that stuff. But when I met my business partner in 2015, we launched the G1 in 2016. The minute we launched the G1, we started working on G2. We launched G2 in August of 17. Worked on G3 before we launched G2 and launched G3 in 2018. And now we're on generation four products and we've evolved into TheraBody with CBD and all this other stuff. And it's, it's been an amazing ride, but I have to say we just started. I think with TheraBody, our new motors and CBD, like we're now ready to do what we can do as a company. I love what you, I mean, that's amazing. And I really want entrepreneurs to understand that you really took a, a, a cultivation approach, right? We're so focused today on growth metrics, on users, on whatever the vanity metric might be. And what you did is you took this, you know, what, what a lot of entrepreneurs would view as immense patience, right? But like a cultivation, almost like a farmer, you're, you're, you're farming, you're checking out your crops. Oh, I don't like it this year. I'm coming back next year to improve it. 
And that type of cadence, I think, is really important and not, not told enough um, in terms of the community. And so it's beautiful. I appreciate that. I didn't have anyone to follow. And, and I didn't, I had a gut feeling that this was going to do something. There was some power this thing had every time I touched it. I mean, I could tell you guys stories of me quitting. You know, there was one time I came back from the UCLA track and I was working on a bunch of U.S. track guys. And I left there from being there from six in the morning till noon with $20 in my hand. And I'd done that a dozen times. And I thought, what kind of idiot am I? Like, why am I doing this? Mm. And I think entrepreneurs, you're going to have those conversations with yourself. And you have to find something that pushes you through those. And luckily for me, the thing that pushed me through is every time I use this on someone, they were so gracious. Like, oh my God, that feels so good. When can I have it again? And I thought, I can't quit. I come home, I, I was pissed off because I'd only made $20 and I thought I can't pay my bills, rent, kids, all that. And I swore at this thing and I put it in a box and I put it in my closet in my, in my kitchen. And I'm like, F you, I'm done. I'm going to go back to being a chiropractor. Two days later, a guy who's now a really good friend of mine knocks on my door. I live in Manhattan Beach. To get to my door, you have to know where I live. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you have to walk behind a house and down this path and Sure. I'm in the bathroom and my daughter comes in and says, dad, there's a guy at the door. I'm like, who, who, what guy? She's like, I don't know. He's asking for you. I come out and there's this guy standing there. I'm like, Hey, and he goes, Dr. J. I was like, yeah. He said, I'm down on the beach training Alex Rodriguez and we lost somehow one of the batteries in the sand and we can't find it. And I Googled you and your house happened to be right here. You happen to have a battery? And I was like, are you kidding me? I just swore this thing away. And now Alex Rodriguez wants a battery. That's amazing. So it, I could tell you little stories like that where the universe sort of nudged me like, hey, you can't drop this. And I'm being real about that. There, there were many times where there was another power that just said, you can't leave this. And so I thought, oh, here we go again. I had so many opportunities to treat different people, but it happens all the time. It happened two days ago I, I, where I'm like, can, is this really going to happen? Can I do this? And you just have to stay committed. I learned a long time ago when I was young, character. Character is the ability to follow through with the decision after the emotion of making the decision is gone. And I just held myself to that standard. Like I committed to do this, I'm gonna do this. So I don't think anyone that starts any business is expecting it to be easy, but I also didn't understand how hard it was gonna be. Oh man. I really love that. I really, I, I love, this is exactly why we started this podcast for these conversations. And I think very few people are, they don't want to talk about imposter syndrome. They don't want to talk about the times they almost walked away and, and they had someone important nudge them, whether it's, you know, someone showing up at your door or a parent or an investor or just someone at the very last day of you closing down is a, such a fan of your product and calls you and says, Hey, are you looking for investors? I'm willing to put in 50,000, you know, and at that time, it's everything. It's everything that you need to say, I knew I wasn't delusional. I knew it. I knew it. I had this <laughs> feeling and now I have to continue. I think that is, there's two things when people ask me how I was able to get through this. It was persistence, consistency, and delusion. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that this was going to be everywhere in the world. How would you rank those out of all three of those? <laughs> I, I honestly, it's a rotating list, <laughs> you know, in the morning, sometimes it's just consistency. I, I, I have to do this routine. Uh, you know, when I'm standing at a NHL, one of the first NHL summer conferences I went to, and I'm the only person with, with standing there with Cutter, one of my good friends and, and our, the VP of the company. And we're standing there at the NHL conf summer meetings with this brand new tool and people are laughing at us. You have to be delusional. You have to kick in. That's what's got to be the first. So I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't think of those things consciously. I did think of consistency and persistence. I knew those two things would happen. I just realized later on I was delusional. <laughs> How did you take the step to, at some point, I imagine you have enough of these market signals, right? Enough of this going where you have to mass produce. Did it happen? Did that happen gradually? Or did a bunch of people just, you kept getting the signals for maybe a lot of the professional athletes and, and you were just like, I got to make a million of these. I got to make 500,000 of these. It was, uh, that's a great question. So in 2000, in 2014, the, the, the ones that I'd sold to the Patriots, 
the manufacturer that was making those products for me, it's kind of funny. I didn't dictate how many I was making, neither did anyone else. It was the manufacturer. I was like, what's the minimum amount I can buy? Because <laughs> I don't have any money. What's the minimum sure. I can buy? And they sure. said, you have to buy a thousand. And I said, can I put a deposit down on 500? Ship me the 500 and I'll commit to the extra of the 500. So I had 500 and guys, I mean, I could tell you stories about having to rent a U-Haul and I had to buy out one of my partners because she was being dishonest and I had to take a sheriff with me to go with a U-Haul to get the rest of my inventory. I mean, to get to where I was when I met my business partner, um, the number of units that a manufacturer could make wasn't on my mind. It was just how I knew I could sell every one I got. So when I met my business partner in 2015, the first part of 2016 is when we started putting numbers together. Okay, how many can we really make? And how many can this manufacturer that I've communicated really make? And so one of the first times we placed an order, I think their minimum quantity order was like 10,000 or something. And I was like, what? I can't commit to that many. That's how many, that's so many people. That's a byproduct of kind of the, meaning that the number that you have to order is a byproduct of kind of what we were doing and who we were working with. Mm -hmm. So when we created the G2 Pro, obviously we created tooling and, you know, our, our own motor and a bunch of different things that we created with that product. And at that time, we were just banking on the fact that our marketing could sell the numbers that were rolling in as we brought them in. Do you ever think, so one thing I always think about like the human condition is just like a mouse will always find the cheese, right? I think a human, for the most part, will always get to their destination. And, and if we assume that to be true, which I certainly do, then it's a function of like, where do you choose as your destination? And so sometimes I'm like, maybe if that first round was 20 million, I probably would have hit it. It would have been a maybe more hard, but you would have at least found a way, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. At least that's, that's how I always think about it. I, I like that mentality. It, it, it makes a lot of sense. I, I certainly think so. But at the same time, so I just got the product myself, uh, the Elite, which I, I've, I, I didn't have any former ones, but everyone says it's, it's super, it's been the quietest one. I don't have anything com to compare it to, but yeah. it seems quiet for me. Um, I play a lot of tennis, a tremendous amount of tennis. And mm -hmm. typically it's like I'm, I'm stretching for hours after in order to keep playing. We're doing like two hours every single day. Yeah. And, and it's pretty intense when I got the Theragun, it was the first time that I felt at least the next day. Great. It was like, I woke up, I wasn't sore. My feet didn't hurt stepping on, you know, getting off the bed, stepping on the ground, which was shocking to me. And I don't know if you can tell us like some of the science or at least some, uh, so I read Tom Brady's pliability book. Right. And I was like, okay, that make, this is starting to make some sense to me. I don't know if pliability plays a role here, but any, anything you can just share with us about why it works. I've certainly felt the effects, but I can't explain it to anybody. Well, just a little background on that. When I first started doing this, I had buckets full of anecdotal experiences. You know, I could go down the list of, I worked on Sloan Stevens and I went to the, to Indian Wells and, and I, I, I the, the, one of the trainers, I was in there working on her and one of the trainers slid the, the curtain back. You got to get out of here. That thing's too damn noisy. Um, <laughs> but I, it was those experiences that that kind of led to these different opportunities, if that makes sense. And watching this happen with an athlete and then taking that same thing and watching it happen in my clinic, I started realizing like there's something happening here, but I couldn't Google it. And, and if you Googled percussive therapy, you know, four or five years ago, there wasn't anything on the market. So I didn't really have a lot of science to lean on. I was watching what happened and because I was a chiropractor and I got to work in these fields, I felt like I kind of had a mobile lab. You know, I'd, I'd go from my clinic and I'd work in my clinic on everyday people. And then in 2013 and 14, I was working with NASCAR, Richard Petty's race team. And I would fly to the race, work on the team, work on the driver. And they're wow. saying the same thing that my clinic patients are saying that aren't really active. And I'm thinking, what is this? So, you know, innovation always leads science because you're always innovating and then you have to validate it later on yeah and i didn't know that concept but i that's what was happening and i just sort of proved tesla did it benjamin franklin did it they just make these things and then they have to come back and validate it so that's what we did we we made this stuff and now i have this collection of of theories and so when i first started doing this in 2016 we launched our first study with usc and USC compared us to some of the other products on the market. And they said we were significantly better at 
increasing blood flow, which increases oxygenation, and increasing the body's ability to move or stretch or range of motion. Man, that was so valuable to me at the time. Fast forward now, we have 22 studies with different academic institutions around the world validating the science. So now with that understanding, I'm super proud to say that we've created more science than a lot of other companies, any other company in this space. And we lead, our products are scientifically validated. It, and, and I can say that, whether I'm talking to Johnny Peacoat, who's the head trainer for Man U, or the head trainer for Arsenal, or Gunnar Peterson, or the guy that's in charge of the Patriots, they ask, what's the science? So what it does basically when you say that is our bodies break down. Lactic acid is toxins that sit inside your body, and those toxins will, will eat away. I'm just making this really simple. They'll sure. eat away at the tissue. So when you wake up in the morning, you have to get the blood flowing to get rid of that lactic acid or that first, second, third day burn you have. When you work out, you break down tissue, the toxins are left in your body. What Theragun does is three things. It's hitting your body at a speed that actually overrides the pain signals to your brain, so it's not painful. You're hitting the tissue, it's going deep enough into the tissue that it's causing something that's called mechanotransduction, which is mechanical heat. So now it, that heat draws blood there, and when you bring blood to that area, you're bringing oxygen. Oxygen and lactic acid, for lack of a better term, oxygen and lactic acid cannot be in the same space. So when you bring oxygen in with new blood flow, it pushes the lactic acid out. They, they can't live together. So now you have clean, pure oxygen to that area. Now your body can heal. The last thing and one of the most important components, our body cannot recover unless we are in parasympathetic state. Parasympathetic state is rest and digest. And when you're using this on your body, it's calming the nervous system and telling your brain, go to rest and digest and let's heal now. So the very best, <laughs> I remember I had an NFL guy, I, I won't say his name because I don't like kissing and telling, but I worked on an NFL guy and he was getting ready for camp. And the first day I worked on him really deep after a workout, he came back the next day with his eyes like this. He's like, dude, I don't even feel sore. And that's one of the best sales techniques I've had is just let me do this to you and tell me how you feel tomorrow. Yeah, 100%. From your perspective too, I mean, uh, an amazing milestone you guys just hit. You're endorsing athletes now. How does that feel? I mean, as an entrepreneur, right? You, this is your baby. How, how does that feel? It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't register. Like it doesn't make sense. I just had a, a really, really great conversation with Maria Sharapova and we're talking about, you know, recovery and I'm telling you guys, I pinch myself all the time. You know, we have some, some really cool athletes and, and, you know, when we worked with Antonio Brown, mm -hmm. he made some concessions financially so that he could work with us. And, and that's not something you expect. You know, these guys have a brand and they have a name, but, it really says a lot about what our product does that they just want to get behind it. And so I'm humbled. I sometimes don't know what to do with it. I've worked with, you know, some of the best athletes in the world and I don't, they're a body, you know, laying face down on a chiropractic table. It's a body. I treat them the same way I do anyone else. And the really good thing about it is Theragun doesn't care if the science works, whether you're Cristiano Ronaldo or my mom, it just works. And so I think seeing these athletes come on, I'm excited because it just allows us to share the message with more people. And that really is what it boils down to for me. For sure. And, and as we just talked about how you view these as, as you know, as just bodies, the new company recently rebranded to Therabody, you're yeah. releasing CBD oils, topical oils, ointments. Give us a sense of is Theragun, Therabody, just trying to own the recovery space? Is that how you view, you know, the next five years of the company? Yeah, I think, I don't know that we're arrogant enough to say we want to own anything. We know what we have, and we feel like this has a place in everyone's life. But we also understand that it's not the do-all, be-all, fix-all. And in 2018, as we grew rapidly in 2016, we got to 45 countries, or 2018, I traveled around to, I had a world tour and I went to 42 cities and 17 countries. It was nuts. And 
I started understanding this, the concept I tell you just a second ago about that this science works on anyone. It doesn't care what country you live in, what language you speak, what color your skin is, what food you eat, what God you believe in. It, I realized it didn't matter. And so I was having this conversation with my business partner and, and we had these goals of being bigger and having a broader reach. And we realized Theragun was a device. It's not a culture. It's not a thought process. And so we recognized as we, as we started adding different services that they were all natural wellness solutions that we could offer people. But Theragun didn't represent what we did as a company. It was a device. And so we thought, you know, let's look for a better name. And guys, it's one of the things we talk about, some of these angels that are watching over us. When we landed on the name Therabody, first thing you do is search. Is that available? And it was <laughs> right. available. Therabody.com was available. So what? Yeah. Then Therabody on Instagram was available. What? And then Therabody <laughs> had never been registered in the state of California. What? So we were like, okay, that, that's what it is. So Therabody really represents our goal of providing wellness natural solutions for you to be able to use on yourself. We are not so reliant on our medical system. I mean, especially now with COVID, people have the opportunity to treat themselves. So we offer Theragun is still our percussive therapy devices, and that will always be that. We just launched TheraOne, our CBD line. I can tell you more about that. So with percussive therapy and the Theragun division, TheraOne, CBD, we felt like TheraBody representing those is, is a much more applicable concept. So I, I know like if we were to create like a, a triangle of peak athletic performance, it would be at one point you'd have training and at the other point you'd have nutrition and at the other point you'd have recovery. And yeah. with recovery, it's such a, it, it's almost outsized, you know, cause we always think about training as a way to get better, get faster, stronger, whatever it might be. But if you don't have the other two, and especially if you don't have recovery working in conjunction with the other two, you have nothing. You, <laughs> you won't be able to increase your training. But I did see that you had to push your release of TheraOne because of COVID. You know, yeah. what, what was that decision like? And was that something that you had to just make quickly uh, as in terms of decision making? And uh, how did that affect any release that, that you just did now? It, it affected it in a big way. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had, man, you guys, if I, we could take another, this could be a whole other podcast. I, I, <laughs> I, if you think about this as a company, we knew we were going to launch on March 15th. That's the same day New York shut down. That's the same day everyone said, okay, the world's on shutdown. My business partner and I were with our PR firm and some other um, employees in New York. And New York started, it started creeping up on New York. And I remember I woke up Friday morning, the 12th or 13th, having breakfast with my business partner. He's like, we, we got we to gotta shut this down. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was leaving for Europe to go on this eight city tour. France, Paris, London, Frankfurt. And we'd all, we'd been setting up for weeks, this PR tour. So I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? It, it can't possibly be that bad. He flew back to LA. I went to did a QVC on Saturday. I flew back to LA on Sunday. We started talking. We're like, we got to shut this down. We got to start working from home. So when you ask how that was, it was stunning. It stunned us. Like, We'd put in all this work and literally the same day or the same weekend, it's like this hits. So we thought, okay, well, you know what? I'm not joking when I say this. I always say where there's resistance, there's blessings. Where there's resistance, there's positive. And I say, go towards resistance. And that really had to put my money where my mouth was. Okay, well, this means something. And so I, we thought, okay, well, let's take a step back. And we were going to reposition and figure this out. Well, at the same time, suddenly now we had an opportunity to donate a bunch of our inventory to hospitals because of the COVID and how much they were working. So that started to take off. And then we started working with other hospitals and, and it was a really cool experience. So we just, we had a chance to kind of catch our breath and realize, okay, let's launch later, but man, let's crush that launch. And so we just geared up. It affected us in a, in a bunch of different ways from inventory to shipping. To, uh, our manufacturing was shut down at certain points because of COVID. It's been scary, guys. I'll be honest with you. It's been really scary, but we've been able to make it through. 
you know, back to what you were saying a minute ago, Diego, about relationships and the long run, that's really what held up for us at that time is the relationships we had. And we had such strong relationships, it allowed us to cultivate those even more. One of the things we do at Theragun is we, we kind of go through this process. We build a relationship of trust, we support, and then we educate. And that could apply to a company, an influencer, it could apply to you guys. We build a relationship of trust. From that relationship of trust, you can build on top of that. So the launch was going to be March 15th, and we realized that wasn't going to happen, and we had to pivot. And I think one of the things we've been able to do, because my business partner and a lot of the people that are in managerial positions, we're involved in a daily basis, and we made a commitment on Monday the 15th that in order for us to be nimble and, and, and successful, we had to over-communicate. So my business partner and I immediately started planning. When are we gonna have company meetings? We need to have them repetitively enough so that people are sharing the information. We got on and had a, a big company meeting, a Zoom call, where we said, okay guys, these are the new rules. We just did our best. You know, I don't know if it was the right way for anyone else, but it was definitely the right way for us. Um, we were able to kind of get through that and, and now we launched you know, with all our products, we're getting ready to launch the, the CBD line. Has there been like a silver lining? Cause I know at least from my perspective, I now I had to work out at home. Now I'm stretching at home. Now I can't order a foam roller because Amazon's telling me it'll be here by November. And I'm like, <laughs> all of a sudden it just intensified my need for recovery. Right. Yeah. And it's like the gyms are closed. So I don't know if there's been a silver lining where now that people have been forced to, to figure out their workout routine in a different way, recovery all of a sudden naturally emerges as an option. Right. Totally. And I think this goes back to what Nick was asking The we kind of went through this transition of, Oh shit, what now? And then we realized, wow, we've got something that could really support these hospital workers. So we donated to over a hundred hospitals around the world. Wow. And then that sort of led into the idea of these hospital workers were discovering, Oh, this isn't just for patients. This is for me. And then we started recognizing people had different new habits. I was on a, doing an interview with someone and I said, think about the best lacrosse player in the world. If I took him and I now put him on a golf course, he's using different muscles. It doesn't matter. He's an amazing athlete. He's a lacrosse player. These different muscles are now going to be sore. Well, let's scale that down now. And you have just the everyday Joe who doesn't work out sitting at his desk all day. And now he's got to work from home. He's probably not showering at the same time. He's not eating at the same time. He's not sitting in the same chair. He's not, the movements are different. His, his head position is different. And now suddenly two or three weeks into this, you have people that are in pain and pain is an amazing motivator. Yeah. So that's when we had this dip and then it came back up. People started searching. I need something that I can treat myself. I can't go see my physio. Massage therapist can't work anymore. I can't even have someone come to my house. And now where do, what do you do with your pain? Where do you go? Our reference or our, our, our difference was, oh, I'll just go to a massage therapist. I'll order a Soothe or I'll order a, I'll go to Hand and Stone, wherever you're going to get this treatment. It's not available anymore. So to your point, Diego, it was people started reaching out like, hey, I got to get one of these. Like yeah. they started understanding the math. It's, it's 500 bucks. Well, I would spend more than that right now to have someone treat me. And by the way, this is going to be in your life forever. It's not a massage therapist that leaves your house. So it was this trickle sort of process that got down. And, you know, I, I think a, a buddy of mine said he, he's a sales rep for uh, weights and stuff. And he said, there's not a dumbbell in the world right now that's not in a home. If you wanted to buy a 25 pound dumbbell, you're not getting it. So I think this, that also tells us that people are doing different movements, different workouts, you know, people that are running that hadn't run before people that are riding their bikes, that that wasn't their source of exercise. So suddenly now on a mass scale, people are sore and pain's a good motivator. And suddenly our SEO search was crazy. So we just that. needed to, you know, it was, it was like, that whole thing you build it, they will come, you know, we just, it just sort of happened. And then I think one, another thing too, is the messaging of who we were and what we are as a company just resonated with people once COVID hit because we have education. We have a sincere desire to help you do more of what you love. And that comes through in our brand. You know, I, I run Theragun university. We have at our, at our company, I'm, I'm 
can't wait to hand that off to someone else because it's a big chore, but it actually covers sports science. And we have three different levels, like a university, you have 100 level, 200 level, and 300 level courses. They're online. You can get online and take the course. So we, we actually spent a lot of time creating these digital assets through, through COVID. You know, we, we, uh, one guy and myself would sit in front of a camera and I'd record some things and we realized that the gyms needed it. You know, gold started teaching online. Barry's boot camp started teaching online. Well, what are these people doing at their house for recovery? They needed something. So I'm, I'm getting me on my soapbox, man. No, no, I love it. I'm curious to see if you have any data to put a correlation between your customers and how they move through the TheraBody system. So like, do, do you know if they, or there's a correlation between them buying the TheraGun and then moving to Thera1 and, or any order? Of- well, first of all, they feel it. You know, mm-hmm. they, they get it, they feel it, they understand what it is. And it's a discovery. It's like a light switch, guys. They feel it and then immediately they, they want more. I was just with my buddy at his gym and I walked in and there was an, uh, one of the NBA players for the Lakers was standing there and he's like, dude, I love your thing. <laughs> and it's, they, they see that and they recognize it. It's something you've never felt before. And when you feel it, it opens up a paradigm. And now you know that's there. You have to have more of it. So when, they, when people process through a system, it's usually just like a lot of other things. You know, if you don't know who we are and you saw us on Instagram, by the second or third time, you're like, what is this? And finally you click. And once they kind of get in, we want them to understand this isn't about selling. We don't sell. We share. We share information. We share science. We share success stories. And honestly, it feels kind of like if you look at all we have to offer, you're kind of an idiot if you don't buy one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, wow, that helps with this and it helps with that. And uh, send, I should probably get one of these. One of the things we felt obligated with, too, is, is making the different versions because, you know, it's not a some people don't need all the accessories that comes with our pro model. You know, you don't need the two batteries and you don't need all the attachments and stuff. And we recognize that. So we, we made different levels that were affordable, but it's like an iPad or a BMW. They just had different versions a five series a three series and a seven series. Well, we just needed to add, offer these to different people that, you know, young kids playing in little leagues, like they're not going to buy the pro their mom's parents aren't going to spend 500 bucks on that but to be able to offer that. So we probably do have some data on that, on, on how people are, are channeled through our system. But it's one of the things I got to say we've noticed is we have really, really supportive customers. You know, there will, someone will say something dirty on nasty or ugly on Instagram and bam, there's like 15 other people that answer the question. We don't even have to do, be the ones doing it. So I think it's, I think people, what we've tried to do, and I'm being so honest when I say this, is we've tried to meet or exceed with our packaging to our messaging and our experience in the app. We've tried to match all of that to the way you feel when you feel Ethereum. One of the things that you know, you've said, you've said so many things that, I just, that just resonate with me. When we first started this podcast, we really just wanted to solve a few things. One, we wanted to inspire entrepreneurship through truth, as we, as we mentioned to you. And then the second thing was just being on a podcast of any following as a founder, like if, let's pretend you just started your company. It gives you a sense of, oh, I'm on my way, right? Even if we had two listeners. And so the, the thing I saw with entrepreneurs like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And then for me personally, it made me want to, how can we help more? How can we grow this podcast to be able to get this company way more attention because what I think they're doing is amazing. And one of the things that we're doing is we're closing on a building on Santa Monica Boulevard and in the front will be a coffee shop. We're literally putting a food truck inside. That food truck was on our podcast and then behind it, so there's gonna be a menu, that door will open, you'll enter a room. That room is gonna be products that are on a rotating basis from this podcast. And And it's just exactly what you said. It's a way, like the reset center, it's pure education. It's this almond milk's amazing because it has four ingredients. This Theragun's amazing because feel it. Don't let me tell you, feel it, right? And we'll just go through the line. This product, this product, this product. And to us, it's, exact, it's, not, it's not about making money. It's just about being able to help a community that we're all a part of and how cool, right? And like, how cool is that? 
And so just from this little seed of let's start a podcast to where we're going, it's so, it's so cool, man. That's and, awesome. and, you know, what you're sharing, it's just, it's, it's exciting. And, it, and I, I hear what you're saying. It's not about the economics. No. The economics will come. You just Absolutely. have to be able to build a structure. I, 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 I hear you. Yeah, yeah, man. And everything that you've been saying, it just resonates. And it's like, I believe you. And, you know, you, and, and that sounds crazy, but we talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and you don't always believe them. You don't always realize why they're in it. Everyone's on their personal journey. It doesn't always happen naturally, but it, it does take, I think, at a point, a certain person to realize maybe this is bigger than me. Maybe this has nothing to do with capitalism. Maybe we just need to make people happy. And the way I do that is by bringing X to them. And, and that's it. And it's like, yeah, anyway. You said something that actually has been pretty profound for me. Uh, I learned early on, you know, in, in like 2010 or 11, that this isn't about me. You know, those times that I wanted to quit, it was, there was something else pushing me. And I learned really quickly that I was a conduit and I had to honor that. It was more about what am I supposed to do and honoring that, that thing that was pushing me, it, it wasn't about me making money or building this business. It was like, okay, I have to do this to make this grow. Okay, I need to do this to make it grow. I, can, I appreciate what you're saying because it, I, it isn't about me. And, and I think you'll, you'll hear people that are around me understand that. It, I'm shocked, I'm humbled, I'm amazed at what this does because this is way beyond me. And, I, and I'm, I'm reminded of that. This is, there's some power behind this and it's not me. I love it. Well, look, I know we're almost at time. Uh, we'll end with two questions. One, tell everyone obviously where they can find you, where they can get the product, all that good stuff. Yep, therabody.com. Uh, it used to be Theraguns, but therabody.com. Our Instagram is therabody. Uh, we have several of those in different countries that are also on there. I'm at Dr. Jason Worsland on Instagram. Uh, someone told me that I need to start a TikTok, and I haven't done that yet. So. <laughs> yeah, you might have a good a good tool for it. The, the Theragun might be might be ready. It could do some dancing, I would imagine. <laughs> the the last question, and I'm really excited to ask you this because I just I've just loved this conversation. But but Dr. J, how is it that you want to be remembered? I I hope that people remember me as someone that wanted to help that I was my resourcefulness and my experiences in life put me in a situation where I could help as many people as, as I could. And this Theragun started out as the language of that. I don't necessarily want them to, I don't want to be remembered by Theragun. I, I'm sure I will be at some point, but I want them to be, I want to be remembered for the reason, not, not the product. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Oh, God. Yeah. Chills. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast, Dr. Thank Jay. you very much. This, thanks, you guys. This is fun. This and I'm amazing. serious. It, it's, you know, as, as a chiropractor, I didn't, I wasn't ever uh, thinking in the business mind. You know, you are a business as a chiropractor. You have to generate your own patients and the system doesn't send them to you. So there is a little bit of an aspect of that. So that's probably not completely true, but I don't, I hadn't really thought about podcasts or, or all those things, but I realized the power of these and I realized you guys have a hundred people you could talk to and to take your time and coordinating and setting this up. I really appreciate it because we don't have a voice. Our voice is just magnified with yours. And I, I think that's a, we appreciate it a lot. I look forward to these and I, and I love the fact that you guys have the, the, sort of this concept that you have, it allows us to me to talk about these things that really are what put me where I'm at. And it, it's, it's real to me. And I appreciate you guys doing this. It's our pleasure. This was a, a podcast that we were really looking forward to because Diego and I are both very into athletics and, and former athletes at a very high level. And so this is something near and dear to our hearts as well. I appreciate it. You guys, thanks so much.